Um, I have a video of Michael Irving that was shit. Fuck. Hey. Wow. That hurt. <laughs> there you go. Fucking win. Ow. <laughs> wow. Good morning, good people, and Eagle and 49er fans. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. This is the eighth season, the eighth season that I have been doing live streams and really growing in YouTube. It was eight years ago that I had about 300 subscribers right now. And in that time, I have been through the highs and the lows of the Dallas Cowboys. I've seen some great players come in and some that went out. And here we are starting this all over again. And I want to thank all of you who have been here through those trials and tribulations and things. And if you just got on board, you're, you're in for treats. Uh, you know, I, I do not hold any punches. I will be emotional about my Cowboys. Last year, people saw me literally having too much to drink because the Cowboys make you drink and falling literally out of my chair. Even my wife laughing at the clips that people were trolling me with on that. But you've seen me elated with the late comebacks and everything else. And one of these times, you're going to see me ecstatic about the Cowboys winning the Super Bowl. Today is the beginning. Tonight, we'll be live streaming. I hope you guys tune in. Um, we're going to be, this is actually kind of sad at the moment. It's amazing how fast time flies. I've had this Alienware computer here in this studio for three years now. And this one is going to be retired in the retirement home is the red brick house. I got a brand new one that's more powerful. That's going to allow us to do more things. And so today, this broadcast right here is the last one with this Alienware from here. You know, we buy things or we root for players and we think they're going to be there forever. But unfortunately, something newer always comes along and takes its place. So, I saw a great article on DallasCowboys.com about Micah Parsons. Now, let's go back down memory lane here because, you know, I, I think we fall for too many times the bullshit that's in with the media. Case in point here, pro football talk. Let's listen to this. This is there for not really real practice. And part of this reality, part of this reality, and when you're not there, you don't really get to, you know, be around the coaches. And when you have a new defensive coordinator who is the quintessential old school, my way or the highway defensive coach in Mike Zimmer, who has already said at the end of the day, we're going to do it the way I want it to be done. He mm -hmm. said that very recently. Here's Micah Parsons, who might not exactly agree with Mike Zimmer talking about his He's just getting all of his in the Cowboys. the Cowboys' new defensive coordinator. Honestly, man, me and Zim probably said a total of 20 words to each other. Oh. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a very quiet person. And all I keep hearing from the coaches is like, Zim likes it this way. I was like... Well, I like it this way, like, you know, so I can't wait to have, like, my true, like, sit down with them. I think it'll be pretty cool because, obviously, old school mindset, old school mentality. Um, but, you know, I think he has a lot of great players, but he ain't never had a Micah before. So um, it'll be fun, and I think it's going to be unique. <laughs> I love it. He also said, yeah, I love he it. Also said that, <laughs> that they need to compromise. You know, the first thing is, you may not come to a compromise on whether or not you even need to compromise. With Mike Zimmer, there is no compromise. <laughs> With Mike Zimmer, it uh -huh. is my way. Uh -huh. It is uh -huh. my way. Uh -huh. And the mere fa I know, too. I I've got the text messages to prove it. And the mere fact, the mere fact that they haven't spoken 20 words to each other. I mean, think about it. Mike Zimmer has fallen into 
a job where he's got the ultimate chess piece. He's got mm-hmm. this generation's Lawrence Taylor, and he hasn't sought him out and kissed his ass and, and you know, fawned Ooh. all over him. No, Zimmer's going to do it his way. <laughs> Zimmer's the coach. Coach is coach. Players play. Players don't coach. And Zimmer don't play. No. And that's how it's going to go hey. for the Dallas Cowboys. And Micah better get ready. Yeah. Because it's going to be good. From it's our gonna perspective, be... it's going to be good. From Micah's Key thing on there was it's going to be good. From our perspective, it's going to be good. This is a case of starting shit where there's no shit. Literally. There's no shit here. Okay? So this article, this, this could be the worst nightmare for NFL teams, because uh, let me, I'm going to, I, I apologize. I'm not a great reader. Okay. I, I, you know, I have a lot of skills reading out loud is not one of them. I've gotten better than when I was in school, but it still sucks. Uh, this almost, th- this just makes me giddy. This coming season for Micah Parsons, it's all about checking boxes as he come goes along. And it begins his off seasons with ratcheting up in a manner in which leads others in the locker room. And you've seen that already. We've seen, you know, I, I saw it for myself in training camp where Mike is running sprints with Mozzie after practice and things where he is, you know, coaching up the other guys and working with Marshawn Needlin and things. Cause he recognizes that we can only go as far as we go together. The three time all pro pass structure is locked and in going into the regular season opener against the Cleveland Browns, knowing what's on the line for many as week one gets underway in Dallas. Contract talks aside, Parsons is looking to prove he's one of the best in the league at his position for competitive reasons, and it begins with trying to outperform a reigning NFL Defensive Player of the Year, Miles Garrett. Also, too, this may be where, you know, Jerry Jones's whole thing of, you know, I want to see more leaves fall off the tree and stuff and making people perform to get that contract. If it ends up being that Micah Parsons ends up being defensive player of the year, you mean that that's a whole lot more money. That's a whole different conversation. So this is a case of Micah Parsons betting on himself. As I go on, this is Micah Parsons himself. We kind of both know where we both are, said Parsons. Garrett is one of my favorite rushers. Him and Max Crosby are two guys that are so freaking gifted. It's going to be exciting to play against them. He's one of the more relentless. The two have have a close relationship that extends off the field as well, evident by Parsons' recent trip to China, featuring texts from Garrett with recommendations for restaurants and the like. But on Sunday in Cleveland, the two will be fighting tooth and nail to show who's better both at their positions as a team it's going to be exciting it's i'm going to say that parson said it's really not about the number of sacks i get it's really about letting the world know this dude is really the best the three-time all pro bowler uh three-time pro bowler has finished each of his three seasons with at least 13 sacks notching 14 in 2023 Mike Zimmer returning as defensive coordinator comes equipped with packages in the playbook that will make it very difficult to key in on where Parsons will line up on any given snap. He and Zimmer will have endless amounts of dialogue since minicamp, and Parsons says teams will see him lined up in virtually every spot on the defense except cornerback even appearing at safety at times in certain sets, operating in every role in defensive line and the linebackers' crops as well. He'll be a two technique, maybe a zero technique, maybe a five technique or six technique, or maybe off the ball, or maybe weak side, or strong side, or fourth and so. Long story short, you might have an easier time locating Waldo drawn in invisible ink. I think we align, Parsons said, with the relationship with Zimmers. Here's, a, here's, here's, here's the key thing here, people, where everybody was saying, oh, Micah Parsons and Zimmer is going to get ugly. Oh, we're going to be able to talk about it. I think we align, Parsons said, of his relationship with Zimmer. I think I just had to show Mike what I'm capable of and what I can do. Everything that he thought I would be, I probably have achieved that and more. He came up to me and said, you say you want to do this and you say you want to do that. If you just do this detail stuff, you can be the best ever. 
I think we have evolved in a good way. So much for the drama. So, you know, pro football talk, save the drama for your mama. It's a relationship that combines with that of Mike McCarthy and everything Parsons has put in his career thus far, learning some of the lessons along the way. There's only one way Parsons wants to be viewed by the time of the season in his career when it's all said and done. He wants to be a champion. It's the killer, the hitman, the assassin, he said. The killer is sloppy. He's probably going to get caught. He's not very good at what he does, but he's a killer, you know. He's raw on the streets. Then you got a hitman. The hitman might not get caught, but you know who did it. He's probably a little bit more clean. And an assassin, you don't even know he's there. You don't even know he did it. Each time you really want to develop, and I think that this fourth year, Mark, for me, I think I'm ready to be an assassin. The creed of the assassin, however, is to never stop until the job is done. So when the Cowboys begin this season with their trip to Cleveland, it will mark the first and 21 game plan of Mike McCarthy and the need of Cowboys right off the foot to avoid the slow start of a pivotal season. Granted, the Browns will be without all-world running back Nick Chubb, but that doesn't mean they've devolved a lack of talent. Um, I'm going to point out that also that uh, uh, Willis Jr., their left tackle, won't be playing. And so they're going to have a right tackle who hasn't played left tackle in 10 years coming back from ACL from the first game of last year playing at left tackle. So that's going to be interesting for... Um, Micah Parsons, wherever he lines up. The bottom line, it's going to be very important to get off to a fast start. Even without Nick Chubb, you've got uh, Jerome Ford. They're really good back there, and anyone else that steps aside really does a great job of taking it back in. When Chubb went down, Ford didn't miss a step, and they've got a great receiving core, drafting and trading for Jerry Judy and having Elijah Moore. We've really got to anchor down and stop the run and then get after the quarterback. Anything less will be unacceptable to any assassin worth their salt. That's pretty good. And I dare say, <laughs> I dare say, that's going to be really, really good. So, so much for the drama and the idea that Micah Parsons and, and Mike Zimmer, so we got the Mike and Mike show, or the Micah and Mike show, I should say, um, so much for the drama that everybody thought that the Dallas Cowboys were going to have, that Micah Parsons, who wasn't showing up for OTAs and everything else, with the new coach and everything else, thought that it was going to be a problem, that Micah Parsons was going to have a hissy fit, that they were going to be fighting left and right. Here's what he realizes. Mike Zimmer is a wealth of knowledge. He has been there, and he is going to be able to bring out the best in me. It behooves me to listen to somebody who knows who's been there and to take the talents that I have and maximize them. He also realizes that as good as I've been, I've got to be better in the playoffs as well as my team and developing and becoming a leader on the field. You can't ask for anything more than that. So for those out there that say Micah Parsons is selfish, you know, Micah Parsons is doing this podcast and stuff, it's an hour on Tuesdays, guys. It's an hour on Tuesdays. I do 10 videos a day sometimes and do my day job. So let's let's be real here. You're talking about a guy who can be generational as far as talent goes. So as we get ready to roll out of here and say goodbye to our computer here, Let's hear what the talking heads have to say about the matchup between the Browns and the Cowboys. Can the Cowboys win if C.D. Lamb is not 100%? Is C.D. Lamb going to play on top of going against a team in the Cleveland Browns in which week one last year, they went against Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, and T. Higgins and said, we don't give a damn who they are. We're going to play man coverage. We're going to blitz and shut them down. Tough matchup for the Eagles against Green Bay. I feel that way. Yeah. Bad matchup for the Cowboys against Cleveland. Mm -hmm. On the road, 
starting a rookie at left tackle, starting a rookie at center. Who's the defensive end for Cleveland? Yeah, Miles. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Miles Garrett. Year. You y'all remember last year when he was doing the crossover? Yeah. 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 Where was he on the line of scrimmage doing that? Over, over the, the center. Over the center. So I'm starting two rookies against the defensive line that chases quarterbacks. And to Harry's point, you can make the case this is the best man-to-man group yes. in the league. Coverage three, wise, three with Newsom three league. and Emerson, Martin, Emerson and, and Ward. Yep, Denzel Ward. So if, if we're sitting there going Cleveland at home, which was remarkable at home last year, playing man coverage, I don't care. CD Lamb is fantastic, but they can cover. And now you got to deal with a pass rush with some young players. It's just a, a bad matchup for Dallas week one. And in that building in Cleveland, they are they are confident yeah. with that matchup for sure. Yeah, look, the other side of it is interesting. The Browns are a team. They don't get a lot of attention. They're in a tough division. We all understand that. The Browns made the playoffs last year with arguably the best defense in the NFL and essentially Joe Flacco mm-hmm. coming off the couch and leading them into a playoff spot. Deshaun Watson, there are a lot of questions. A lot. Is it possible he recaptures some of what he was? I want everyone to watch Jason McCarthy. He knows him a little bit here. J-Mac has gone head-to-head against Deshaun Watson. Can we go back to October 15th, 2017, please? Uh-oh. There's Deshaun Uh-oh. rolling out. Uh-oh. J-Mac, Uh-oh. what do we got here? <laughs> Cookie. Uh-oh. Now, let's put some context to this. The Houston Texans won this game. I think the score was 33-17. to 17. Mm. It was probably 33-3 to 3 at that point. So, we got dominated. But, <laughs> hey, you got to be a lone star sometime in a bad situation. The ball gets thrown to you, make your play, and go do something. Why did you ruin that? You didn't have to do that. Uh, <laughs> no, no one in the audience knew that. You absolutely could have just got said, He's a man of honor. Of they, they, they see those Cleveland Browns out there, and they're like, well, maybe it was when Hawk was there, and they were 1-15, or no. well, the year after when J-Mac was there, and they were 0-16. So either way, they probably <laughs> didn't win that game. I'm pretty sure I actually have a significantly worse interception that I threw <laughs> to either him or his brother. And uh, all we all can guarantee you have. Me to him. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I would bet on that, but that's a whole other thing for a whole other time. Let's talk. Let's talk about Deshaun Watson for a minute here. The conversations around him have been about anything but football, and obviously they've been awful. And right now we're in the in the in the, in the possibility of talking about that as being one of the worst trades in the history of the NFL, unless zero wiggle room, Greeny. Yeah. It's zero <laughs> wiggle room. I mean, it's over if he doesn't get it done now, right? It's not over because they did the whole contract. Yeah, thing, and I think his money's guaranteed it's for the foreseeable future. Seventy-three right? million yeah. the guaranteed year, the year next two years. Of a five-year situation, and everybody understands that jobs are on the line with, based on his play. They have a new offensive coordinator in Ken Dorsey. Kevin Stefanski still complex. Mm-hmm. Like everything about this, and no Nick Chubb. Deshaun Watson knows the expectations and he knows the pressure. He has said, "I understand." I think I, I can still play at an elite level. Great. Go out there and prove it. If it doesn't happen, there's no blame to fall elsewhere other than the quarterback. They got a coach that's two-time coach of the year. They yeah. got a phenomenal scheme and play caller in Kevin Stefanski. Offensive line, that's going to be one of the best. They got a tight end group that's fantastic. They got skill players galore. There's And they got a defense that'll be Man, top five in the NFL. they four quarterbacks last and year and made the playoffs. playoffs. What a plethora of it, offensive It is that line. unique plethora. situation where it's as much as I hate, yes. When we play the quarterback gets all the credit, quarterback gets all the blame game, this is one of those situations. I think there's two in the NFL, Philly being one, where if it doesn't work out, yeah. it's, it's going to be because the quarterback doesn't play well. Yeah, the contracts are what they are. I, I get it. In, in, in Philly, that's certainly the situation, and in Cleveland as well. But this thing has been an abject disaster so far, and the team is too good around him not to make some kind of move. Coming up, top of the hour. The there we go. The matchup. One last thing I want to add in here because again, this is this is all about Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons, a man on a mission right now to get paid and to be the best ever. This was how much Micah. Help you getting Jordan Phillips, Limble Joseph, some more bigger bodies up front that you didn't really have for most of the offseason. What have you seen from them now and how's that gonna make your life easier? I think just in awe is going to make our life easier. Them getting that penetration, um, them forcing the quarterback to step back, just getting that knockback, that's going to be extremely important, especially on those early down. That's where a lot of sacks come from, right, on first and second down. Third down sacks are common a little bit, but not too much, right? You catch them in the play action. You catch them off guard with them. Um, you just get a beat on the snap, right? So that getting that early push and those guys, those big monsters right there, um, I think that's going to be a great asset, and, you know, it kind of shows you the type of guy Zim is because I haven't seen this type of reconstruction in the D-line room since I've been here. So I don't know if it's Zim or, you know, but he, he got it done. What's Zim got planned for you in terms of how creative <laughs> he'll be with your role? 
I think on game day, yeah, I mean, I know y'all look at that little PFF stuff, but y'all going to see I'm moving around a lot. Like, I don't think there is a side. I think each, you know, I got my own personnel and stuff. It's going to be exciting, I'm going to say that. Mm, you know, I, it's going to be exciting. I probably play every single person. And I think this is the first year where I could be in the two-eye. You know, I could be in the three. I could be in the four. I mean, it don't matter. Like, it could be a linebacker, be in a slot. You know, I could almost be the safety if you look at it that way. In how, some how many different positions do you think you'll play somewhere? I don't know. He got the packaging, but, you know, at the same time, it's all about calling a good game. You know, if we're giving up a lot on first down, it's going to be hard to get in those packages. If we're giving up and, you know, they, they're winning in the marks of the field sticks, you know, all that stuff matters. But if we do what we do, I think I could play a lot of different positions. How you had said back at – This is incredible. For you to be content with the season and feel like you've done enough. Man, I would say it wouldn't be really about the number. It would be like – it will probably be like, damn, this dude's really the best in the world. So, like, it's really not the number. It's really about just letting the world know, like, this dude's really the best. Like, This dude's really the best. As always, good people, I appreciate you guys. And um, tonight, don't forget to tune in for our live stream starting at 8 o'clock. Peace out. Our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Sports Report.